In this segment, we're going to cover one of the most common problems and fixes to problems with the internet and telephone service. Uh, we're going to cover how to power cycle a modem. So when the internet or phone service isn't working or isn't working correctly, this will generally fix it and is one of the most common troubleshooting steps that you can take. So if your phone and or internet aren't working, uh, the first thing that you would want to check uh, in that case would be to check and see if your cable modem is functional, if all the lights are on. Um, so normally the cable modem would be located by your computer. Um, however, if you don't have internet, it might be down in your basement or by wherever the, the installer left it, so you might have to look around. The key point we're looking for is we're looking for the black box that has the green lights on it that says Aris or Motorola on it. That's how we know it's the Buckeye cable modem and not your router or some other piece of equipment. So once you've located your modem, the lights will normally look like this. You may see the link light flashing. That indicates that the internet connection is working. You may also see the telephone light flashing. That would flash whenever the phone's in use. Uh, the other situation you might see is if the modem is not working. We're going to go ahead and simulate what happens when the, the modem goes offline. See, right now the modem is offline. You'll see that the DS light is flashing. That indicates that the modem is not receiving any signal. So this would be a perfect example of when you want to check the connections on the modem and try power cycling it to see if you can get a connection back up and restored and get the modem functional again. So we'll want to flip the modem around to show you the connections on the back here. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is check the connections to make sure they're all tight and secure. And again, this is in the case of either the internet or the phone or both not working. So starting from this end here, you'll see that we have the two telephone lines. We've got the TEL1 and the TEL2 spot. So sometimes when the phone's not working, you may see an instance where for some reason the phone cord got unplugged, and when somebody plugged it back in, they plugged it into the TEL2 spot like that instead of the TEL1. So everything may look normal, but in fact, the telephone 1 spot should always be the one that's in use if you only have one phone line. So that's one of the things you can check. Uh, the next thing you can check is to make sure that the Ethernet cord looks just like the phone cord, except it's a little bit bigger. Make sure that that's plugged in here. That powers the Internet for your computer. The next connection is the coax cord. This is what actually connects to the cable outlet in the wall. This is the one that screws in. So you just want to check and really make sure that that's hand tight. And the next one is the power cord. So that's this one here. So assuming that all three of these connections are tight, we want to power cycle the modem. So we'd want to unplug the power cord here. And then depending on the modem type you have, if you have a, a telephone modem, meaning that you have these phone ports here, the modem's also going to have a battery backup that needs to be taken out. So the battery backup on this modem and most of the other ones is right on the short side of the modem. So be on the bottom. There'll be a latch that pops open, just like the back of a remote control. And then you pop this battery pack out here, which can take a little bit of effort. So now that we have the power cord unplugged and the battery out, if we take a look at the front of the modem, we see none of the lights are on. That's how we know we successfully powered it down. So while this is powered down, the next thing you'd want to do would be to either shut down any computer or router you may have, just to make sure that those devices are booted up in the correct order. Uh, in the case where the phone's not working, you just want to wait a few seconds. So to power it back up, first thing we want to do is actually we want to plug the power cord in first. This is to make sure it's got a good power connection and that the, uh, it's not going to run off battery and die on you again. So when you plug the power cord back in, you can see that the power light starts flashing here and they should start going solid one at a time. So they should start flashing and go solid here. So it looks like this modem's back up and running. The link light's already flashing because the computer's still plugged in or turned on. Now we've got to go ahead and put the battery back in. Now some of these batteries can be a little tricky. You'll see that there are some metal tines in there. You want to line those up with the battery pack here. You can kind of see that. Just pops back in there. Then we've got to snap this back on. And it's important to put the battery back in just in case you ever lose power. That'll provide up to eight hours of standby phone service so that you're not without a telephone. 
So now that your modem's back online, the next thing you want to do is check and make sure that the internet uh, is working by checking your browser. Check and make sure your phone has dial tone. And that's power cycling a cable modem, and that's the number one fix for most internet and telephone issues. And if you do have any other problems, feel free to contact us at 419-724-9800. We'll be more than happy to assist. We're available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year.